Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In the part 2 of my 3D printer saga, basically the design phase, I want to show you a bit more of the 3D part. Basically this is how my final printer will gonna look like again. This is not the printer I have designed, I have not started the design part yet. Uh, basically yesterday, Monday was not that productive, Tuesday I did uh, did a lot of minor stuffs and uh, figured some things out. So. I'm running a bit behind schedule but uh, project is moving along so idea is what the heck I want to do now every 3d printer you see has to be designed somewhere so this is how generally they are designed uh, this is ender 3 uh, from Creality, and this is open source printer so you can find exact detail models uh, height size everything that you want to have uh, except I think the build plate uh, build plate I'm pretty sure you can just get from it even, it even has the uh, basically heated cartridge location so uh, quite awesome uh, material so to say now thing you have to understand this printer is skeleton printer and you can easily you know see it is everything is open everything is exposed now what does that inherently mean that means if i want to make a box for it let's say i go in orthographic uh, remove perspective from it so to say you can easily notice there is no box that i can create in it which is not which, which basically more or less will have a lot of hollow space uh, that's generally not a good idea if you want to make an enclosure not only it's wasteful uh, because if i have to make a, let's say another uh, let's say you know block uh, let's say this is nema uh, 17 motor so that means this is supposed to be around 42 millimeters I have to like uh, around 42 millimeters of empty space so I have to add another aluminum channel here that is like that big and then it encloses it and then like you know empty space here and I cannot count like it's really not that efficient if I want to make enclosure now question becomes is enclosure necessary uh, short answer yes why because a you like your hearing you don't want to hear your 3d printer going me 24 no matter how much uh, efficiency and optimization you do even with let's say silence stepper driver it's still a moving part so it's still gonna create noise so you want to seal it up another aspect is which is the benefit aspect is uh, temperature rise now again it's a very big deal for people who live in northern hemisphere simply because temperature there even in summer does not go too hot so PLA does require a kind of like you know 30 to 40 degrees Celsius now I live in uh, ground floor of my building so it's a bit cooler here uh, so PLA can work easily but here's the thing. the moment I touch ABS my printer is like bro I can't handle this now I can print ABS in open print platform slowly small parts and uh, some slicer setting optimization but it's not a recommended it's, it's basically like trying hoping basically you, your fudge factor is too damn high if you do ABS in open enclosure I want to do in close the reason why uh, no other companies can do that is simply because there is a patent on basically if you make an enclosure for it and it's heated uh, you are violating the patent that patent supposed to have expired in 2020 but that did not happen the lawyers fought back and they won so right now it's pushed to 2021 and I'm reasonably sure it will never ever happen but if we're gonna have a, like you know proper uh uh, so to say 3d printer with enclosure other than th that exact company other companies are uh, like even um, e3d I think uh, they have like a, you know fancy open back uh, in the bottom because legally they have to uh, follow that and all that jazz so but I'm making it I'm not expecting to sell it so uh, I can design it from scratch and have an enclosure which is heated that will allow me ABS carbon fiber and not to mention I just want it to be a plain looking material it's, it's just a box go inside it get your part out done so I can stack as many of them and another aspect this is fine weird flaw in this design is basically everything is just hanging together basically this interface is here this is here this is here these are the three main components now here's the uh, my aim is basically put all of them in the top section now you're like why well that will give me the advantage if this is completely enclosed I can pack two three five six or even a print farm of that and all of the hardware electronic part would be accessible from top so not only it will make it compact and it will also uh, allow me another benefit is that uh, Electronic parts do not like to be hot, they like to be cold. Uh, while your printed material would like a uh, bit warm temperature, electronics will fry themselves if you did that mistake. So I have to put it somewhere else. Now, I, uh, some printers do, which has enclosures, like, you know, some jerry rigged enclosures, they have like, you know, com completely second box. Again, inefficient. So on top, I'm gonna put that. The benefit of putting it on top would be like uh, the Z drive motors, basically, which you can see. Uh, this is a bad design. Why? Because the lead screw is in what we call compression. You never want this basically long rods in compression they bend by default it's physics they will bend so you want to generally put them in tension so I'm gonna put the motor on top you can easily find there are many uh, printers that do that it's not a magical thing it's a common thing so that will have the two motors on top which will keep at least the life of those motor uh, you know higher because extruder motor will heat up and the uh, z-axis motor will heat up and y-axis motor will heat up so those motors will suffer some bit but electronics will be on top and z-axis would be on top and putting it on top will make z-axis much more stable because you know uh, the access will not bend it too much 
uh, let's go into perspective to see it properly so that way uh, i can have a printer which has like a top floor would be basically completely for electronics that's my uh, right now design goal i have did a little bit of experiment with fusion 360 of trying to import basically these are the aluminum channels uh, this is 4040 this is 2020 uh, no this is 2040 this is 2020 and this is the most uh, complicated one this is what we call uh, 4080 now this is a c channel so you can see here this is my aim for uh, basically base plate uh, y axis as you will uh, or x uh, yeah y axis that's what it will be classified as now problem with this x system is that uh, the motors are 42 millimeters so they will not fit inside it if it would have fit inside that would have been awesome but they will not fit. as you can see there is a bit of overlap there because the motor is 42 millimeter but the gap uh, the basically the c channel part is only 40 millimeters so that little bit and I do not possess the luxury of like you know milling this part out that would make it awesome but I do not possess the tools necessary for that so I'm thinking of I'm gonna have a plate that will do that and these are MG and 12 uh, linear rails unfortunately they will cost more than the whole printer put together but I have to do that. I do want to make best of the best printer so I'm gonna go for it no matter how badly I go bankrupt after doing that or not go bankrupt if you guys keep uh, supporting me like even, I'm, even if I'm getting little 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 by donation by uh, s 2 t at the rate upi uh, that's my donation link uh, even if people like you know support 10 rupees 10 rupees if hundreds of people do that that does uh, reduce the blow otherwise my bank account is gonna go ballistic if i try to do that but again i have to and this will be the build volume 300 millimeter cubed again i might go on top because uh, if i don't do that there is a serious risk i have might have to chop off the uh, basically linear bearings you cannot buy linear bearings in pre-cut situation generally for cheap uh, generally it will be like you know 300 millimeter 300 and uh, four, uh, 50 millimeter and 400 millimeter something like that you do not have the luxury of like okay give me exactly 320 millimeter you will never have a printer it's like okay 300 millimeter so only it has to travel 300 millimeter your bearings must have you know bit of foreplay and back play without it it like there is a very serious risk you come it will simply not work as you can see like uh, it does have an overhang even if you look from that side so you draw a less a central axis you can easily see you still need uh, this much of extra room so there's a might chance i might make printer a bit taller uh, so let's see uh, so this was just an update is like what i'm doing i'm trying to learn i'm a bit behind schedule but uh, well, that does happen in projects i have worked in a lot of projects so it's a common thing so I hope you guys liked it this kind of uh, update so what the hell i'm trying to do and i would urge you seriously urge you go into vision 360 and just learn about this thing because it's a free cat software for crying out loud it's a high-end cat software that is available for free so you have no other reason especially if you are dealing with 3d cnc machine and all that just like you you should know how to use these things so this was my presentation on like what the hell i am doing part two uh, and uh, hopefully you liked it learn from it in, in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this this like twice to show me your extra disappointment and please uh, subscribe and press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching